Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And today I'm going to show you a really cool technique that gets you all the detail back from your original image after you've run a filter on it. So like a painting filter that blurs and, you know, meshes everything together. Well, now you can recover that detail with this really awesome technique. So take a look at this. So here's our before. This is before doing anything uh, with our heightened detail. And here's after. So we've run a, a painted filter on here and gotten all the detail back in the great thing is it not only works on portraits also works on landscapes let's jump into photoshop because i got a lot of cool stuff to show you So in a recent Topaz Labs webinar, I was showing this technique to add detail back to an image that you've run a filter on. So for this, I'm going to be using Topaz Impression, but this can be done on any image that's been run through some type of filtration program. So the image that I used during the webinar was this photograph of myself looking like uh, Tony Stark or, uh, you know, the man behind the Iron Man costume and uh, kind of playing with his prototypes, you know, getting everything tweaked up before the big fight. So... Uh, one of the things I did during this webinar was I showed several things. So I showed uh, how to make this uh, beam of light look like it's underneath my shirt, which is pretty cool technique. I showed how to use Topaz Clarity to get some of the contrast and color to look right on your image. And then I showed how to use Topaz Detail to get this nice, um, almost like frequency separation look on faces. But now I'm going to jump into impression and show you how this works. So I'm going to press Control Shift, Alt, and E, and that's going to flatten down my image. I'll just call this IMP for impression, and that's going to be impression layer one, because this is typically the technique I use for this. Now, this is not going to be a Topaz impression tutorial. I want this to be more like what happens to your image after you run a filter on it, and you want to get the detail back, okay? So don't really worry too much about Topaz impression. If you've never seen it before, impression is a pretty cool program that can make images look like paintings, and it does it in a really interesting way. Um, one of my favorite presets that I created here for Topaz Labs is one called Oil Glaze by Blake Rudis. So I'm just going to select that and press OK. And that's going to jump me back into Photoshop with that happening on this layer on top. So usually what I do here is I take this, this opacity and I drop it down by about, you know, 60, 65%, somewhere around there. And then that gives me like just this wash of paint over top of my image to kind of make things look nicely, slowly painted on the photo. Now I'm going to duplicate that by pressing command or control J and I'll just call this imp two for impression two. And I'm going to go into filter topaz labs and go back into impression. Now what I want to do is do a really painted looking photo. So even more so painted than the last one. And I'm building this up almost like a painter would build up their layers. So I'm going to go into impressionistic and I'm going to select Monet one. Again, don't worry too much about what type of filter I'm using. I'm just showing you how this buildup works. So you can watch as this detail just slowly just disappears on my image. Now, because that opacity is still set to about 64%, I'm going to dock that down just a little bit more to about 50%. And I will call that good right there. Now, here is the kicker. How do you get the detail back? If we zoom into our face right here, we'll look at this. There is no detail in the hair. There is no detail in my eyes. And look, my fingertips are pretty much gone. There's barely even the hint of a nail there. So what you need to do for this is actually go into the very last layer that you used before going into your artistic workflow. So for me, that was this detail layer. Now I'm not gonna do that to the very beginning layer because this has information in it that I don't want the detail from, but I do want the detail from the very last uh, realistic looking shot before I ran into the filter program. So if you're not using Topaz Impression or any of these other things, that might be your bottom layer. Just go back to that very last layer before you started doing anything artistic. So I'm going to press Command or Control J, and I'm going to drag this up to the top here. And what you're going to see is that this is basically what it was before we did anything else. All right. This is the detail copy, essentially everything underneath there copied. So I need to turn this into linear light. So I'm going to go to blend modes here and I'm going to change this to linear light. And after I do that, I'm going to press command shift U or control shift U. And that is going to make my image black and white and set it to linear light. So it's going to have a very interesting look to it. I don't necessarily like this look, but it's going to solve our problem. So now what I need to do is the high pass sharpen. So I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to go to other and I'm going to go to high pass. Now you may have sharpened like this before. And if you've ever done this with linear light, you know that a 3.0 radius on linear light is entirely too much on a landscape. But for something like this, where 
where we really want to recover a lot of detail and we want to do it really uh, with a, a lot of oomph, we want to go a lot higher. Now I could just leave this at, you know, 1.9 or so, and then uh, maybe duplicate it or something. But what I find the best thing to do here is to bring this up to like 3.0 pixels. So really, really bring that detail up really high. Okay. That way it gives you some flexibility to use that in the future. So I'll go ahead and press OK. And with that at 3.0, I'm just going to look, show you what happens here when you drop this opacity. So now as I drop the opacity, it lessens the effect. So I start with a high effect and lessen it to the desired amount with my opacity slider, rather than trying to start low and build up even more. Okay, this is a good technique to use in almost any situation. But when you look at this, there are some areas that I don't want this detail to take place. I don't want this detail to take place in the background. If you can see, it's basically sharpening my background. I don't like that. So what I need to do is I need to create a mask on this detail layer. So I'm going to hit this mask button down here. And right now this mask is set to white. So basically nothing is happening on my mask. So when it's set to white, um, everything is uh, normal. Now, if I invert this mask and press command or control I, that is going to make everything go away because anything you paint in black will make things go away on your mask and anything you paint in white will bring it forward. It's a black conceals white reveals. That's the little thing to remember in your head. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to just move into my face here and show you what happens when I use a Wacom tablet with the uh, brush. So I'm going to use a brush that's about the size of the area that I want to recover. So that's going to be about the size of, you know, my hair and my ear and my eye. So as I paint with white, watch what happens. As I paint with white, things start to come back. Now, because I'm using a Wacom tablet, see how it's not white, it's actually gray. And the harder I push, the more things come back. That's why a Wacom tablet is very nice for doing these types of things. So if I want this to come back in full force, I press really hard. And then if I want to slowly taper the detail up into my hair like this, I very lightly and delicately press down. Let's press alter option on that mask. And you can see this is pure white. And then it transitions into gray because I'm not pressing as hard on the top of my head as I am on the side. Okay. So I'll just keep pushing and press, just painting along, painting along. And I like to paint nice and slow slow and methodical. So I'm not pushing all the way down as I paint. I'm slowly painting very uh, lightly and delicately pressing down on that tablet so that I'm not uh, bringing too much forward too quickly. Again, this is another way that we control how much detail comes in. So the opacity slider and now with the mask slider, we can really have uh, a, a lot of control over how much detail starts to come back on here. But this is very similar to how uh, a Renaissance painter would paint. Okay. So, you know, you've got uh, these swaps of paint all over the place that kind of create this person. But then you go back in there with the fine tooth tooth comb or a fine tooth brush and you start to paint in those details or sometimes they would even use uh, a palette knife and go in to those thick paint strokes with a palette knife and start to make marks like you would see in like this hand here okay and then I can go even further with this and maybe make my brush size a little bit larger and then paint some areas on maybe my shirt to bring some of the thread count back on my shirt so it looks like that the artist went through some really fine detailed work on the shirt area there and then maybe around this area as well and paint painted through there. So you get the point. Okay. The idea is to really filterize the image and then bring the detail back in that photograph or uh, the photograph beforehand on top of that filtered area. So you get the, the best of both worlds. You get the detail from the original image, but you get the nice filtration from the uh, painted uh, image. Now this also works with landscapes. Okay. So that's a, that's a portrait and here's a landscape. So I've already, I've already pre done everything up here. So let's zoom in really close to like these leaves here. So here is the original image right here. I ran that impression layer one, impression layer two. You can start to see how all the detail starts to go away. And then I added that detail right back on top of it. So sometimes that detail can be really stark. So you see those highlights really popping forward like that. Sometimes you need to drop that opacity down a little bit. But here, if you're comfortable with blend if, this is also where you can just double click right on this background copy and use your blend if principles so that maybe you don't want the black areas here to get more, uh, detail than the rest of the image. See that? So now there's no detail in the black areas because we don't want that there anyway. And then we can even do that with the highlights if we wanted to also take some of the edge off of the, the highlight detail. So that's a pretty powerful technique, even on landscape photos. Okay. So the basic idea behind this, just so you, so you can kind of gather all of it, you have a baseline layer, which is your original layer. You duplicate that layer, run a filter. 
Right. After that filter is run, whatever filter that may be, if it's a Topaz filter, that's fine. Uh, if it's one of the painting filters that's in Photoshop, that works too. And then you duplicate the original background layer on top and do that high pass sharpen set to linear light and then press Control shift u to desaturate it. The reason why you desaturate is because you don't want any color cast coming into your detail. You just want luminance pixels, not color pixels. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. If you like this tutorial, please like it, give me a thumbs up, share it, comment on it. And if you really want to take your work to the next level, head on over to EverydayHDR.com and get on the email list. Okay, so subscribing here on YouTube is step number one. Step number two is going over to Everyday HDR and getting on that email list. And the reason why is because not only do I do tutorials like this every Friday on YouTube, I also do extra content on Everyday HDR and you'll get promotion discounts for all the crazy uh, awesome packages that I create that are a lot more powerful and useful than some of these tidbits of information I give you on YouTube. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate it.